Buddy, how's it going? Uh, another live video talking about seller objections. Remember, I'm going to go through a bunch of these. Now, remember, this isn't just like a salesy thing, right? So, I've talked about before the difference between persuasion and manipulation, and I'm not in the business of manipulating people. So, I'm assuming, of course, that this person wants to sell their home, needs to sell their home, and selling their home is the best answer for them. But there's these things that get in the way, and they could be emotional uh, things that get in the way, emotional arguments or attachments to the home or different things, or they could be logical ones. Um, and sometimes those logical ones are real, and then there's real things to overcome, and sometimes they're not. It's just a, faulty, a flaw in the logic um, that that particular person has. All right. And then, and this is so, so again, we're not trying to convince people to do things they don't want to do. We're just talking about helping people get to their goals. And, and so, um, this would be a case of faulty logic when someone says, you know, and usually let's say, you know, I assess, we assess somebody's property and the best case scenario, you know, we can get, let's say 495 for the home and they wanted 550 you know so in their heads they say well they get mad and they're upset because their house isn't worth what they thought it was going to be worth so then they you know well if i i if my home's if you're going to sell it for 495 i'll just sell it myself you know is usually the response when someone's really mad <laughs> all right well having a tissy <laughs> is it going to change your situation and um you know facts don't care about your feelings <laughs> all right so if your house isn't worth 550 it's not worth 550 if a buyer's not willing to pay 550 for it they're not going to pay that cutting commission or, I'm sorry cutting uh, out a realtor isn't going to help you get 550 <laughs> All right. If the best case scenario is that someone's going to pay 495, then that's your best case scenario. Okay. So let's go over this for a minute. We won't talk necessarily about what our team charges because we charge actually. Um, we have a different. We have a tiered commission structure, so it's a whole another thing for another video. But the industry average is six percent. Or the industry kind of standard is 6% for commission on, on a listing. Now understand there's no price fixing, so commissions are always negotiable. They can be higher than 6 or lower, but the standard in practice tends to be 6%. That tends to be the average. So when you look at a 6% um, commission that the seller is paying, let's look at what, what's happening there. So somebody wants to sell their home, they're selling their home on an open market. And so in order to sell their home on an open market, they have to offer, there are agents that are involved that will not only bring buyers in, but they'll represent buyers as well and make sure that the buyers are taken care of in their best interest and make sure that the transaction goes through and they'll facilitate that transaction, making sure that it goes through without a hiccup or problem and it goes through legally. I mean, when you're dealing with the buying or selling of a house, it's a legal transaction. It's worth, um, of course, didn't put my phone on, whatever. My phone's just going to ring during my stupid video, naturally, but whatever. Um, so, <laughs> the, the um, where was I, right? I should tell you what. <laughs> but, yeah, so in order for the seller to sell their home, they have to offer it on the open market. They're offering a commission to buyer's agents they're going to represent someone buying that house as a buyer agent you don't want to not be represented so if you don't have an attorney doing it for you then you want an, a real estate agent and a real estate agent is going to be cheaper in the long run than an attorney especially if you're a buyer because what happens is the seller who wants to sell their home is generally paying those realtor fees okay so for a buyer commissions are free the buyers not paying commission the buyers paying closing costs so they're paying taxes they're paying you know title they're paying for insurance they are paying a whole bunch of stuff 
you know, down payment, things for the mortgage company, of course, but they're not paying realtor commissions. Realtor commissions are paid generally on the seller side. The reason the seller pays those realtor commissions is because they want to sell their house. So if you want to sell your house on an open market, an open exchange, you got to offer a commission for that. And then you're hiring somebody to do so, so you're offering that person a commission as well. So the average, you know, again, the, the industry average is about 6% for a listing. Half of that would go to a buyer agent. So the other half, you know, you're actually paying. So you could list it on your own and only pay, but you're not saving 6% if you list it on your own. You're saving 3% from paying the commission, but you actually lose money in the long run, and I'll explain that in a minute. So this concept of, well, I'll just list it myself. Here's the thing. You're going to have to pay out a buyer agent probably 99 out of 100 times, unless you know the person or have your brother, you know, your brother's going to buy it from you or your friend's going to buy it from you, you got to pay an agent who's going to facilitate that transaction. And then you're not represented. So what are you going to do? You're going to pay, you're going to do with no representation, risk making a legal error. So if you get sued or any problems happen, you're going to be paying a lot more than 3% of your transaction, right? So if something goes wrong in that, your legal liability is on you. I don't know about you, but I don't want to enter into a half a million dollar transaction without some sort of legal representation or some sort of, you know, legal coverage, so to speak, right? And so what a brokerage and an agent does is they make sure that the transaction goes through in a legal way. That's one of the things they're doing. They facilitate the deal. So, you know, you could just pay out the buyer agent and not be represented, but then you're going to have to hire an attorney. It's going to be more expensive probably than the 3%. They're going to charge you a fee. Now, maybe you get a deal. Maybe this, that, and the other. point is you're not really saving all that much money that you think you're saving, okay? Because, again, you're giving half of it away. Now, you could, of course, choose to, to not give um, anything to a buyer agent and just try to sell it to individuals. But now you've narrowed down your buyer pool. Because most buyers are not going to go in without some sort of representation. Remember, they're doing a legal transaction as well. If I'm buying something for a half a million dollars, I don't want to do that without some without some sort of assurance that I'm doing this in a in a legal and upright way. I'm not just going to do it under the table with some guy, you know what I mean, and hope that it works. And then risk getting sued or risk having a problem with the state or something else later on. So... This is why, as a buyer, I'd want an agent. So anyway, you're going to end up paying that one way or the other, okay? Now, so you're not saving the 6% you think you're saving, you know, because you have to pay a buyer agent. You need your own representation, so you're probably paying for an attorney, or you're taking a much bigger risk than you should take. So that's already problematic. You could try to cut commission, but then that's, that creates a problem as well because now you've compromised your ability to sell your house. So how does that work? Well, I won't list your house for 5%. Why won't I do that? Because the industry standard six, buyer agents expect to get 3%. And unfortunately, in our industry, we don't have a ton of agents like myself and my team members. We have a lot of part-time people who are taking buyers around. They pay attention to how much commission is being offered, so you have to illustrate that on listing ticket. I will tell you, because the statistics bear out this way, that if you're only offering 2.5% to a buyer agent because the listing is only for 5%, and so their half is 2.5%, they're putting your house at the bottom of the list. If they're going to show 5 or 10 properties to their buyer, your house just became the last choice. You see, when I market a listing, I'm marketing it to the buyers, but I'm also marketing it to those buyer agents. I'm making it enticing and reasonable for those buyers' agents to want to promote your house to their clients. You see what I'm saying? And if I'm offering them less commission, then they're not very motivated to try to sell your house to their clients or promote the benefits of your house to their clients. Does that make sense? So... Cutting it below 6% does you no good as a seller. No good whatsoever. Don't even, I don't even care if you're using your friend and not me as an agent. Don't ask them to do it for less money because you're hurting, you're compromising your ability to sell your own home. 
All right. Here's the other thing too, since commissions are not secret, all right, they're transparent, they're on the listing ticket, and they're also on the closing documents, and they're on the purchase agreement usually, they're on a series of documents. Buyers know when someone's offering less commission, and then they just price accordingly. So if you're offering, if I'm dealing with a for sale by owner, I'm offering them, I'm coaching, I'm coaching my buyer to offer them less money for that house because that seller is saving a certain amount of money because they don't have to pay out an agent. All right, that's why would I why would I not do that? I do that because I'm if I'm working with my buyers, I'm working in their best interest, right? I'm going to get my buyers the best deal I can get them, and we do it all the time. If it happens to be a for sale by owner, I already know as a buyer agent I'm going to beat you up on the price. That's what's going to happen, and and so that is what every single buyer who wouldn't do that. If you know somebody's saving, like I don't know. A few thousand bucks, wouldn't you try to offer them then a few about a thousand bucks less or try to share in that savings? Of course you would, right? So so you don't save money that way either because the buyers, any buyer in their right minds is going to offer you less money for the property knowing that you don't have to pay an agent out, <laughs> right? So, so there's another reason why selling it on your own doesn't save you any money. But besides all that stuff, the National Association of Realtors does the statistics every year. It's a little bit different, but it's like 13% difference. So like for sale by owners get 13% less on average. Now it's a national average, of course. So it will depend on markets and locations. But on average, for sale by owners, owners get 13% less for the properties. Now, in a heavy seller's market, maybe it's not 13%. You got those one-off stories where, well, I did it myself and I got this great deal. Anyway, whatever. Thing is, though, see, as a for sale by owner, you don't even know that you could have gotten maybe 10, 12, 13% more. You don't know that because you don't have the data. I have the data. I can run the numbers and I can find out, well, was it worth the 250 you sold it for or could we have gotten 270 Right or 280, I don't know. Right, I mean, so it's it's what buyers were looking for in that area, what people were willing to pay, and at the time, I mean, if it's current, I can check. I can't go back five years ago, right? But if it's current, I can check the current market conditions. You think you're getting a great deal, and you're losing money. You're leaving it on the table, and you think you're doing great <laughs> because you saved a couple percentage in commission, maybe. Anyway, <laughs> you just don't help yourself in any of these situations. You really don't. But the other part of it is this. Let's say you're that guy in the example I used in the beginning who I wanted 550 for my house. You're telling me it's only worth 495. That's not good news. I, I realize that and I share in that pain. I, 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 some, I have to deliver that message, unfortunately, to people pretty frequently sellers tend to think their houses are worth more than they are it, it just happens it happens a lot and, and it's and it's not good news especially if they're really planning on that extra money I get it I understand but here's the thing if I tell you your house is worth 495 that doesn't mean 495 with the paper sign on the yard okay that means 495 is the maximum that it's worth when you maximize the marketing potential your digital marketing is hot your ads look good. Your search engine optimized. Every single buyer in your area knows that your house is for sale. Every single buyer, including the, not just the buyers that are going to pay $425 or $435 for your house, but the buyers that are going to pay $495. The top end buyers see your house, they see it presented in the best possible light, and then they go do a showing. And from the showing, we follow up after that showing. We promote its value and its worth. And then they place that offer and we work out and hopefully get you full price. But man, I'll tell you what, it's a lot of work to do that. Work you're not prepared for. I promise you that. Unless you're already an agent or you've done this before, you do 10, 10 15 transactions a month on your own, you're doing this out of nowhere you probably have another job, you probably have family, it's probably not gonna work out for you, you know? So what happens when you list it on your own, 
you're not getting four ninety five and saving commission. You're probably getting a lot less than that, and because you're getting beat up on price, and for all those reasons that I mentioned before, and but worst of all is you're not properly marketed, so you're not properly exposed to that market to those high end buyers. Heck, you know, even if you if you've hired the wrong agent, you might as well have tried to do it on your own too. You hire some, you hire a part time agent or somebody that just doesn't know how to list and doesn't know how to digitally market. You're probably in the same boat. You probably maybe would have been better off on your own. So you got to hire somebody that's an expert at this, that knows what they're doing, and they will get you that extra money. I mean, if you do the math, if the NAIR statistic is correct, and it is 13%, does, is it worth saving 2 or 3% to try to list on your own because you're mad about the way the price turned out and the values turned out, you know, then to lose 13% in the long run, it's not, right? You save a couple percent, but then you lost big time, you know? So sometimes you got to kind of spend money to make money. This is why we hire people to do things. It's not just in real estate. We hire people to do things. We hire professionals because it's better for us when we do it. They save us money. They get us what they need. They do better work. That's why we hire somebody rather than just doing everything ourselves. I see Norm's on here. I'd hire Norm to do my landscaping rather than me do my landscaping. Unfortunately, I live in a condo, Norm, so I can't can't hire you because <laughs> my condo complex already has it taken care of. But anyway, you see what I mean? Like, if I want the work done right, I'm hiring somebody rather than spending my time to do it half half cocked. Try not to swear on the video. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? <laughs> rather than doing a a a, a, a part timer job trying to do it myself and wasting my time, I would be better leveraging my time to make what my my per hour dollar amount is worth doing something else. I'd be much rather, for example, using the landscaping example, you know, and so I'm noticing that because no, like Norm's on here. Uh, Norm uh, De Decker is a mutual friend and he does great work with landscaping and stuff with this company, right? So like, I used to hire my landscaping out when I had a farmhouse in Oxford. Why? Because I, my time was better served making money in real estate versus spending five hours to do a bad job on my lawn. <laughs> right? Take that five hours, break down what my hourly rate's worth. What's my time worth? More than what I'm spending to have a guy do my lawn for me. You get what I'm saying? So, and, and, and it turned out, of course, it looked way better when he did it. Because he had the equipment, he had the expertise. Could I do it? Yeah, sure. But it's going to take my time up and take my energy up. I'm going to lose money in the long run because that's, mo that's, that's hours not put towards my work. That makes me money. And I'm not going to do as good of a job. So anyway, you hire the professional. I, even if you get bad news. Even if you get bad bad pricing news. I'm sorry. And if I have to deliver that to you, you know that bad news, I, I do empathize with that. I really do. But it, once again, I'll say it again. I'll say it in the video. I probably won't say it in an appointment because you probably want to punch me if I say it in the appointment. But f facts don't care about your feelings. They don't. You know, if people, buyers are going to get the best deal they can on your home. That's it. And it, there's a perceived value of your home. And if those numbers don't work out to be what you want, I'm sorry, but the facts don't care about your feelings. It is what it is. So what we want to do is do the best job we can to get the highest dollar amount we can. Not throw it all away because you're not getting exactly what you would have liked. See what I'm saying? So, I don't know. That's a long one. <laughs> That's a long objection handler. Um, if you're a real estate professional and you're in the appointment. <laughs> Oh, Benji, <laughs> I'll hire your whole family to landscape for me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, if, um, as I was saying, right, that's a long one. Now, if you're a real estate professional, there's many different directions. Of course, this could go in the appointment. If someone says something like that, though, in your appointment, they're upset. They're upset, obviously. You got to empathize with them, you know, you find out what they're, you know, find out what their, 
their motivation reasoning is and all that stuff because there could be very real strong reasons why they were expecting that money maybe they're in over their head on a mortgage that's tough selling a house and then bringing money to the closing table nobody wants to do that right um maybe selling their house isn't the best answer for them right now i mean i don't know but if they got to sell you got to get them the best money that they the the most money they could get they won't do that on their own 99 out of 100 times right there's very few people that'll do it and they're going to break their backs doing it too you know i mean their phone's going to blow off their blow their battery up <laughs> you know i mean their phone will ring off the hook if they're doing it we we have a we have a front desk to, to intercept phone calls for our listings for a reason, because if it all went to my cell phone, I'm pretty sure my phone would explode, you know? And then people do that to themselves when they list their house, and then they're mad that people are calling them about their house. I don't know. It's just, it's a headache. It's, it's terrible to do that on your own, and you walk away with less money. You don't save any money. You really don't. And that's the part that's tough to get people to see sometimes, but I don't know, man. Most people who are being reasonable, it's not that tough to figure out. Most people are smarter than they maybe seem, and they're just upset, maybe because their values aren't where they thought. But they're not going to be better off on their own, that's for sure, uh, most of the time. There's very few exceptions to that. I mean, sure, if you if you have the buyer, if I'm selling my house to my brother... I don't need to worry about digital marketing, right? I don't need to worry about his stuff. Call us if that's the case. We'll do a transaction coordination for you so the, the paperwork's legal and you're not paying for a full listing. That's a different story, right? Doing that transaction on your own is different. Um, a, an agent who's done this a million times, even an agent, though, who's done this a lot, probably, if they're out of the business, does not have the resources to list like we would list to get them the most money. So it just, again, it just doesn't pay, you know? So that one's a tough one, guys. If you get, you know, if that happens, if you're thinking along those lines as a seller, I understand you're probably upset. Values aren't where they want it to be. Perhaps you've hired someone before and it didn't work out. That could be frustrating too. You don't want that to happen again. So you're looking at doing it on your own. I, I suggest you don't. It's really not going to work out as well as if you hire somebody who does know what they're doing. So... So hopefully um, you'll give us a call, you know, and at least hear us out if uh, that's your situation. So thanks for listening, guys. I appreciate it. All right. You guys enjoy this weather. All the snow melted. I'm not mad about it. All right. I'll talk to you later.